actually many people around the table have already contributed in different ways. And it's important that, to start with to say that the whole objective of today as well is that it, almost that the three of us who have written it will kind of stand back a bit and, and we want this to be owned by a broader group of everybody around the table, a broader group of organisations in the spirit of the multi-stakeholder dimension which we'll come into, that it should be, it involve contributions from business, from civil society, from government agencies, um, and be some way of, of bringing all those voices into the report, um, so that it's has it, it's not a, a sense of a, a, a judgment or a something like that, but just a statement of where the internet is in Thailand, in the broadest sense. Um, So the main thing about this is that it's not a, a technical exercise. This is about human rights. It's about participation. It's about how everybody uses the internet in different ways and capturing that sense in all its dimensions. And that's why it's so complicated, as you'll see. So it's not a, a, an economic impact. It's not about saying this is what the internet has done to the Thai economy. It's not about really telecoms development. It's not saying about uh, the, um, um, the, the spectrum uh, breakdown for different providers. It's not about numbers necessarily, um, though it has all of this in there. Um, so as you'll see, some of the indicators are numbers and, and of the colleagues from the National Statistics Office who've already put a lot of uh, numbers into this, let's say. Um, but but it also has uh, questions which are more about perceptions, which are about uh, how different uh, constituencies in Thailand feel about how the internet is moving forward. Um, so that's also important too. And then it has some questions about you know, institutional structures and laws and so on. Um, and again, it's not a, it's not a, um, a, a sense of necessarily of comparative, it's also about um, 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 a sense of, uh, of, of how Thailand is. And, and it, the object of the exercise, you know, you, I'm sure everybody's thinking, what is that end product? The end product is not a 56 or 78. The end product is a story, it's a narrative about the different dimensions. So the dimensions, again, you've seen the, the previous diagram, and Misako mentioned this before, and the letters stand then for this. So we talked about contextual, this is a sense of you know, the usual things about where the Thai economy is. Um, uh, demographic factors of the Thai, profile of the Thai population as a whole, um, equality, so balances of income, things like that, and then broad sense of governance, how things work, how the, the system works in Thailand. Uh, rights, um, so naturally UNESCO comes from the UN, there are a set of global rights which are come in there and the extent to which those are being seen uh, uh, um, uh, put into national legislation, but also the, the degree to which they're also being observed in practice. Uh, openness, so we're in the home, let's say, of open source software, but it's also about openness in the sense of uh, society being open to change and to, which is what's necessary for really forging ahead in the digital world. Uh, accessibility to all, that's the most straightforward one. Obviously, the hope for everybody is that everybody in Thailand, everybody in the world really, will have access to that global knowledge base, which is the internet, to help with their daily problems, uh, health and education, employment, and other things that they need to know. And then Mult M for multi-stakeholder. Again, that's really straightforward. So 
uh, um, who is at the table, business, government, civil society, and, and all of them have a stakehold in the internet, um, which is something which is, in a way, owned by everybody. And then cross-cutting, so there are key themes which um, uh, are important to UNESCO, but are also important generally across the world for the development of moving forward. The status of women and, and gender generally as a, a, an issue. The issue of children, and we see that coming to the fore more and more as people worry about the impact of the internet on, on young minds. Sustainable development, we have the, from UNESCO's point of view, the global sustainable development goals. Um, and this framework has to fit into that. Um, and all UN work is, is pushing forward on those goals. Uh, trust and security, um, Charles, uh, I mentioned the situation of children before. This whole question, the whole question of fake news, all of those issues about security, protection of personal information, um, protection of other kinds of information is important there. And then lastly, the legal and particularly the ethical problems that the internet poses of all of us when we're online and what we look at and what we don't look at and so forth. So there's a whole set of issues there. Um, um, so again, some of the principles quickly of the, the methods of, of the way the work uh, puts together. There's, there's 300 indicators altogether, and then there are these core elements, core indicators, which um, are the ones which UNESCO has decided are um, the ones which are the key, the basic elements, building blocks, if you like, to, to the, the framework. Um, and so those are, tend to be the ones which are easiest to get information on, but there are other side, others which information which comes in at different points. Um, so again, within that uh, uh, framework of the 300 and 100, there's a lot of scope for bringing in uh, uh, things which characterise the internet in Thailand and how it develops. Um, and that's really important to back, capture that breadth of what's going on here, as well as the depth of it um, within the indicators. So it's a mix of statistics and narrative. So obviously from the statistics side, there is the economic statistics, but then there is um, a very accurate annual survey of households. And the established survey is what, every two years, I think, something. Um, so again, there is good data from Thailand. Um, so there's some really solid um, results to, to, to lean on there. Um, but then we also need these qualitative data around perceptions and around uh, the different stakeholders' understandings of how things are going. And then for each category then, there would be a summary um, which would characterize that particular dimension, so openness, rights, stakeholders, access. Um, and it's not aiming to produce an international index, so it's not like the Human Development Report or the World Bank or the um, uh, uh, to, um, Internet Development Index of ITU. It's, it's designed to produce a, 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 a story. Um, but it's a story which has to reflect your views. It's a story which is not, we're the writers and we have to, we're putting together different points of view, which obviously at different times say different things. But broadly speaking, it has to be a kind of summary of what everybody says. And the purpose of this meeting is to hear your views, to try and bring your views into the report. So we've, we've got the four core dimensions, rights, openness, access, and multi-stakeholder. And, and now we're going to kind of, I'm going to hand over to Art, who was um, put the most of the work into the rights element. Um, I will deal with open access and, and, and accessibility, and then Hirong Rong will deal with the multi-stakeholder element. Uh, okay, I'll just continue, right? So this is the, uh, uh, the first category, uh, it's uh, about rights, right? Uh, which is not, uh, which are also like, uh, cover things like cultural rights as well, right? As uh, Simon mentioned, right? So I think like, uh, 
you already have like somehow the the the, the report the 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 book about indicator. Not, not, not probably like about it. But anyway, right. So these are like the the the, the question, the main questions, right? That uh, oh, okay. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> wow. No. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. So, so these are all, all, all the main uh, uh, questions, right? Uh, mind you that actually, like, uh, when when I uh, do the pilot, uh, uh, we actually like pick uh, uh, not not every questions, right? But you 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 will see that that we like uh, 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 smaller questions, right? Uh, on, on the next slide, right? But like when when we develop the uh, uh, pilot study, right? We select like we uh, so called like core questions. Right. Uh, out of these like uh, like uh, six uh, main questions, right? Uh, which is like about like legal frameworks, right? So so you're talking about not only the the law itself, right, but also like the institutions, right, to to enforce the law, and also like uh, 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 what actually happens, like in practices, for example, right? And then the uh, the question B is uh, about freedom of expression, right? Uh, see its uh, access to information and so on, right? Uh, and these are the uh, so inside, right? Each uh, like let's say like uh, big questions, right? Uh, there are like uh, smaller ones, right? Which is actually more more than this one, right? Uh, more 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 than, more than the things that uh, uh you see in this slide. But uh, all these are like, the selected core questions. That we use in the pilot study, right? For example, like uh, when we're talking about uh, the uh, film expression, for example, right? Uh, they're talking about like well, whether it's actually go in accordance with international law agreements and standards, right? Which actually like Thailand or like a lot of member countries are also like um, uh, like part of, for example, right? So these are the questions, right? Or we talking about like uh, another example, it's like uh, public participation. Right, whether the uh, information is actually available, right, and accessible to the public, right, so they can actually like uh, get participate in the uh, decision making or like uh, in the uh, the uh, policy development, for example, right, like or, or like uh, public consultation process, for example, and then there are things like uh, Sometimes uh, not really uh, included in some other indicators, right? But we think uh, we think that uh, this uh, uh, this uh, universality indicators should also like include it as well. For example, uh, things about like whether uh, internet, right? It's actually not only a communication platform, right? But it's also a platform uh, to enable people to get access to other rights, uh, right? So this is we talk about like healthcare, right? The rights to get. Uh, uh, these like uh, services from uh, from 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 the public uh, sector, right? Uh, to uh, talking about employment, talking about uh, education, right? And then uh, these questions actually are concerned about uh, when we're talking about uh, the freedom of expression or get access, right? A lot of time uh, it's actually taken for granted that you're going to use the uh, maybe the uh, national language right so so in, in, in case of thailand central thai right but uh, what about uh, if you not like uh, cannot really understand thai fully right can you can still uh, get those very important information right so if you are min minorities and, and use all the languages uh, as part of your life uh, does uh, uh, that type of information is actually available for your communities right so so uh, and uh, the thing is like uh, all these questions it's uh, actually some of them it's it's look like uh, it's, you can you can see how to say like uh, it's actually not really isolated questions right sometimes uh, it's actually linked together for example when we talk about public consultation right uh, if it's uh, something going to happen in your in your community right and uh, the uh, government agency say okay let's have a public hearing right but if the information right it's actually not available uh, in the language that you can fully understand. Right, so uh, it, it can cause some problem, right? So these two questions can link together as well, right? So when you see these questions, uh, uh, try not to think it like uh, in isolation, right? It's actually uh, somehow linked together as well. So these are uh, core indicators, right, for 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 the rights part, right? And some of uh, the observations, right, from from the uh, from the pilot, 
studies, right? And, and as uh, Simon already mentioned, right, this is uh, uh, from uh, the observation uh, in the limited time and limited resources, right? And, and at the time, we probably cannot really get access to uh, some of the information, right? So if you think like uh, from those core indicators, right, you have like more inputs, right? Uh, today, it's kind of uh, you, it's opportunity uh, to uh, do the feedback, right? So observation from this price part, right? I think like uh, we, we, we see that like in terms of uh, the golden standards, right? Whether it's uh, about like the uh, data protection, freedom of expression, and things like that, right? Thailand is actually like quite good, right? In terms of like golden standards, right? Uh, we actually like members of uh, a lot of the international uh, uh, laws, things like that, right? And, and bodies, right? Uh, and also like adopt uh, a lot of like principles implemented to the national law, right? However. Uh, when it comes to uh, in the area, for example, like data protection, right? Even though we, we just have uh, the the law, right, just this year, right, and it's going to be uh, effective fully uh, next year, right? Uh, still, there are like uh, uh, quite big exceptions, right? That uh, are kind of concern, right? For example, in section four of our Personal Data Protection Act, right, uh, there are exceptions for things like national security, security, forensic, um, or anti money money laundering and uh, for uh, in the area of credit bureau, right? Which is actually like uh, in a lot of countries, there are exceptions like this as well, but the exception, are, uh, they, they have actually very specific, right? To the activities, right? But uh, oftentimes the exception uh, or in Thailand case, yes, it's an exception for the whole uh, industry, for the whole section, right? Or for the whole agency, right? So uh, this is one of the uh, observation that we think that uh, uh, maybe uh, can be improved example right uh, the next point is like there's no formal adoption of net neutrality right so in terms of competition law right uh, it has been seen right uh, or perceived right to uh, not only in the internet area right actually uh, for a lot of in industry that our uh, competition uh, commissions not very effective right and this uh, 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 perception also applies to in, in the area of the internet industry as well right so in the area of uh, net neutrality rates, they're actually the, uh, not not a really like uh, fully like adopted uh, in this concept, right? Uh, next, it's uh, uh, it's like uh, a lot of time when it comes to consumer rights, right? Or uh, the dispute between the consumer and the multinational platforms, right? Which is out of Thailand jurisdiction, right? There's uh, there's lack of effective uh, enforcement, right? So that's uh, one of the things. And then uh, next two points, right? Uh, I just combined together. It's related to uh, the law that has been perceived, right, as a restriction uh, to the freedom of expression, right. And many times, right, it's come uh, under the name like hate speech or fake news, right. But uh, when the the law actually got enforced or implemented, uh, it has uh, 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 used in a different way, right. So, uh, for example, like. Uh, there's a case that like maybe uh, the information itself, right, is actually uh, maybe not 100% accurate, right, but uh, there's no intention of uh, to, to harm the public, for example. Uh, but uh, maybe the government see that's like this information, right, it's actually the, the attack to the government. So they label this as fake news, right, and use uh, laws like a uh, computer farm act, for example, right, or defamation law. Uh, under the penal code to uh, sue uh, those uh, people who express uh, uh, the thing, right? Uh, uh, and uh, when it comes to freedom of expression online, right, it's also connected to other issues like privacy, uh, freedom of assembly and association as well, right? And the last point is about the public participation, right? Actually, Thailand is uh, a rank a relative high and also improving right or uh, through years when it comes to the public government data right uh, anyway uh, there's a lot of cases right when uh, for example when the uh, go uh, government right when the cabinet change when the government change right from from like one election to another election uh, they tend to change to the new design of the website right so all the links all the URL all the web address change right um, and people no longer uh, be able to get access to the information. So basically, the information is already uh, it, it's there somewhere in the website, but the link that you have it's no longer valid, 
right? Because like uh, th there's no concept of like permanent link or something like that, right? Uh, uh, the government keep changing the design of, of the website, for example. Or sometimes uh, it requires some knowledge to actually get search the data. For example, when uh, it comes to the uh, court cases or court order, right? Uh, there's no single point that you can actually go to. Uh, uh, if there's like uh, 20 courts, right? Administrative court, uh, con uh, consumer right, uh, consumer protection court, uh, court uh, in like North Bangkok, South Bangkok, inside that, right? In Chiang Mai, inside that, you have to go through every court, right? So at first, uh, you actually have to know first, like this case actually belongs to this court or that court, right? And then you can go to search. And sometimes you cannot actually use the keyword to search. You actually have to know the specific uh, uh, document number, right? So yes, the document is available online, but it's not that accessible, right? It's not searchable uh, like a lot of, of, of time, right? So so uh, uh, so the observation is here. It's like public data. It's it's available, yes, but maybe not always, or sometimes uh, a little bit difficult right, to get access to. Okay, I'll pass to someone. So the, the next dimension is, is openness. So as I said, this is not just open source software, but it's open um, society as a whole, as it were. And you can begin to see a lot of the indicators kind of cross across the different categories. Um, the letters here, you find pretty much the same under each category. So law, we just saw on the rights, law and legal um, and policy. Uh, B, open standards. Uh, so again, there's standards for open access to a variety of matters. Standards for um, open internet and technical standards open markets so that the market for um, in the internet the internet the e-commerce and so on um, open content open source but also open data um, and then lastly open data and, and, and government in terms of that data being made public um, and again i think it's important to stress here that that it's this balance that is struck here none of these indicators fall completely one side or completely the other and there are reasons why you know to take, just to take the last one out of the hat for open data but there's some data that government would want to withhold it is important it, it may in fact in, infringe personal data anyway you know, many government offices hold personal data and they cannot release it because of that personal infringement but there's a balance here to be struck. So some data can be released, some data can't. Some things are restrictions. Um, you know, we all know that fake news needs some kind of control now, but what kind of control and how does that balance work so that you can keep that um, open access to the internet to be able to read whatever you want. Again, this is a problem we have you know, 300 indicators or 100 indicators even to present in half an hour or an hour or a very short time um, it's so it's difficult to really go down into the details um, but these are the core indicators here so you can pick out maybe a, a couple of things on the way through as it were um, well there is so there are some amount of telecoms data we want to look, we, we have included in the report some sense of market shares between different providers, but there is a balance here between different providers, uh, a choice for people, uh, um, and that sense of an open market again is there. Um, uh, uh, open education resources, open data, um, legal frameworks, availability of public data, um, and our so really what we're doing at this point in this session, we're just picking out those core indicators just to give you an idea. And we pick out some simple, quick conclusions. But all this is to, to be developed. And, and this is where if you see things that you feel that things need to be nuanced 
or things which are missing, which are important things to get in, this is again what we need to hear from you. So generally, especially for me as an outsider, I see that the Thai economy is very open, very entrepreneurial, um, where small businesses start everywhere, you know, and you see them all the way down the street when you walk down uh, anywhere in Bangkok. Um, now, and, and people we've talked to and people, things that are resources that I've seen say, there are support for startup. Um, but clearly, this needs to, to go more, there needs to be more support for startup. And, and startup is, is one thing. Sustainability into the future, I have the sense maybe that the, the lifetime of the business, the average startup business, is not long here. Um, and then let's it, we, we have to consider all the time of this being talking about online activity, right? And when we notice that only a quarter of small business with 10 employees are online, so that, that clearly is, a, is, is something that needs uh, um, to be addressed, as it were. Um, and, and clearly, we know lots of reasons why lack of resources, lack of skills, lack of knowledge, but still. The internet is the source for a lot of those good ideas for business development. It's the source for marketing. It's the source for all sorts of things. A lot of that business survival rate could probably improve significantly if uh, this figure went up. Um, again, I don't want to dwell on this too long, but what I, uh, from, the, from the work that we've done on this, one thing that others seem to be saying is that in the future, the next few years, there are expected opportunities in health and education for uh, internet businesses. Um, and clearly, there is an e-health strategy for strong strategies here, um, which probably don't exist again in many other countries. Um, um, so again, this is a positive point, but also a, a point where um, uh, things may um, need to move forward in the future. Uh, again, two sides to this coin too. So, uh, open data. So there are a number of, from the international side, initiatives to um, push and to support the idea that countries should put more public data and, and other kinds of data on the web for easy access. Uh, so education resources, clearly uh, teachers are always looking out for new learning materials that they can use in the classroom. Uh, even people, citizens generally, are looking for uh, courses for information they can use to improve their knowledge or solve problems that they particularly have. And there is a major side, site for open education resources in Thailand set up by the government. Equally well, um, the, the DGDA, DGA has set up uh, as well a, a major site for public information um, and again you can see it has a huge range of data from many agencies so again both of these really show that Thailand has very much taken on board um, the idea of open data however as Art was really saying some of these sites can be difficult to use and, and you, you certainly ask yourself with some of these uh, major uh, quantities of data how easy is it for users to find what they want um, and when i looked at the site and even though i don't know thai i can see that i can find categories i can find particular elements but then the particular document i have to really look right through it to find out exactly what it's about and what, what it, it, whether it'll help me or not. Um, and I can't really go take a long time going through a thousand documents like that. Another point though is this is in, in the survey data from the NSO, this is actually one of the major uses that people make of the internet. So one of the biggest things that the, both businesses and individuals say they use the internet for is accessing government information. So again, we have a, a kind of double-sided thing here. On the one hand, there's a lot of data out there that the government has put online, and there are a lot of people who are using it. But these figures, figures are still relatively low, um, and so there's still a lot of work that could be done to improve the usability of the sites, and that users 
there's a lot of space for more users to be involved here, which would help enormously in, in a number of different ways in taking things forward. Um, generally speaking, um, although we could, you could say that there are um, a limited number of internet service providers or telecoms companies, that's the same with most countries. And it's clear this kind of fierce competition for market share here. Um, and uh, um, what particularly strikes one is that uh, the devices, the internet connections are relatively cheap. I think if you look at the International Affordability Index, Thailand is in the top 10, in the cheapest in the world in terms of country, uh, in terms of accessing the internet in that sense. So that's, again, it's a very good sign. There's a, an open commercial market, there's a sense that it, it's really cheap, easy people to, come to, to get access, and um, there is competition. I'm, and then I, I've got that last point down about open source software. I'm going to go over it, but this is an open software conference, so <laughs> plenty of people to talk about it with. Is that going the right way? No. Let's talk about it. There we go. So, conclusions. Um, so, there's still, in, in openness, there's a lot of positives here. Um, there's a success, uh, uh, there's an open, there's a really strong commercial market, a really strong competitive environment. Um, there's a lot of open data which the government has put forward, um, but there's need for continuing development. There's need for continuing support for small companies, and there's need for continuing development of the government sites and more government information to be out there to help people move forward in this area. So that's openness. So this is the easiest one to deal with, accessibility to all, thanks to very good data from the National Statistics Office. I mean, it's a simple point here, really. I mean, it, it will get more complicated, but basically what we're trying to achieve here, obviously, is that everybody in Thailand is on the internet and using it for, to improve their lives in all sorts of different ways. <clears throat> no, I'm going backwards. There we go. So again, you can see the same categories as we've had before. Um, legal framework, rights that people have access, connectivity, can they connect um, the provide from the provision sense, uh, the coverage of, uh, of, of wireless signals throughout the country, um, which is obviously very good. The level of traffic on the internet is the um, technical bandwidth enough to take that traffic. Uh, uh, affordability, which I've already talked about. Again, these crossovers go across the categories. Equitable access, the key kind of element here, I would say. Local content and language, and Art talked a little bit about language earlier. And then skills and competences. Yes, things may be cheap, and you can got your phone, you can press the button, but you do have the skills to really find what you're looking for. No, I'm going backwards. There we go. Oh no, I didn't do core indicators. Um, so again, um, I probably covered those pretty much in what I just said, but you can see how those categories boil down to a number of specific questions. So these are the ones that are really where we kind of the framework pushes us to write something, a paragraph on each one of these. Um, ICT skills, media literacy, there's some information, but it's limited and it's difficult to really put your finger on exactly um, the level of skills uh, here. Um, uh, languages, Generally, this is not a huge problem in Thailand, but there are significant minorities and can they access what they need to to improve their lives. Uh, um, number of technical indicators around provision. Um, affordability, yeah. uh, broadband coverage. So, progress and universal access, it's a nice easy one. Um, some questions here, the standard indicator is about have you ever used the internet? So, well, yes, I used it 10 years ago, but now I'm in my little village at home, it's a bit more difficult. So, but there are 
questions around that aging of the population, I'll get back to it. And I'll get right to it here, in fact. So um, this is the population projection by age group. And as we all know, Thailand has a very rapidly aging population. Um, and if you look at it, um, this is then the, um, yeah, 60 plus and 50 plus. And you can see that this is by, by next year, in theory at least, this is like 30% of the population. So a third of the population are over the age of 50. It's huge. And yet look at the internet users on this side. And only some 10% of that group, or 10% of internet users come from that group. So it's very clear in terms of the population, this is the area which needs most work. And when I was in the old days when I worked for UNESCO, we used to deal with literacy like this. And we always used to be the older people who were in the older school system who were less literate. But people always used to say, well, when the school system moves forward, this group will disappear. I don't think this is going to be the case here, because we all know the internet moves forward, forward really fast. I mean, I'm having problems already with the Internet of Things. When I'm 10 years older and I've got my walking stick and so on, I'm going to be in an even worse state. So this problem is not going to go away except through actually addressing that uh, with that group of people. Oh, I'm going the wrong way again. I keep on turning this thing around. So to put that in a different perspective, this is simply taking the, um, the percentage of the population of six, which is from the survey, the uh, NSO survey of household use, and just plotting that out as a percentage of internet users, as a percent of, of that population group. And you can see immediately, it's not unexpected, um, so the red areas are the hot areas, if you like, where internet usage is incredibly high. And as you get bluer, you get colder, and it's the more remote areas where internet usage is very low. And surprise, surprise, it's mostly the rural areas and more remote areas. And that is the place, of course, where a lot of the over 50s are. Because at least in the rural population, their kids have all come to Bangkok for hot shop jobs in the city. Um, they all have their smartphones, but back at home in the village, their parents are quite isolated. So it's clear again, these two figures fit together very well. Um, but it's the younger people, yes, there's a question of skills in the education system, but we all know you hand a smartphone to a 10 year old and only takes two hours and they use it better than you do. Um, but the older people, they don't know which button to press at all. So there's some question here. So there are, there are issues about language, art, race, also about disability. You know, if, if I'm blind and I have a smartphone, I have to rely on Siri or Alexa or, or in talking to the phone perhaps to to make it work. But the phone can be a way for somebody who's disabled to have access to all that they need um, in, in services which reduce mobility can stop them having access to. The internet can be a huge help to dis disabled people. So some excluded people, parts of the population, um, they're simply the people who've been left behind in a way by the huge progress that Thailand has made in terms of internet activity. Um, and if you look at this comes, I think, from the National Statistics Office, again, affordability is not an issue. And you can see that from the prices itself. It's how to use it. With the National Statistics Office survey, the biggest barrier is always, but we can't see the point in using the internet. But that answer is coming from people who don't have the skills to really use it and don't have the, the education, to, or not the education, but the training to know what to do. But 
for successes, and the, the government is very aware of this, and we have the, the net pressure problem which has gone over to, is it, if I remember rightly, 24,000 villages uh, a couple of years ago, um, and that is the kind of programme that has to go on, I think. Um, so it's, if you like, keep on doing the good work. There we go. Now hand over to Kiran Bong. Morning, I can sit down. Um, when I was working on this last year with Art and um, two other researchers, we only have like a, a little more than a month to come to uh, do research and compile everything. So um, much of the result, as uh, Simon rightly pointed out, probably is, is quite limited. So um, your participation and your input today would be highly crucial. Uh, in any case, I guess we, we agree that uh, the Rome framework is a workable and uh, it provides an overarching scheme, working together a range of factors that shape internet development as a universal resource. Um, but when we're given this um, task to do last year, um, we looking at um, not only the feasibility of the indicators, but also the applicability of the indicators to the national context in Thailand. So as far as multi-stakeholder participation is concerned, um, when, when um, we look at the, the question um, semantically, you know, just to look for the meanings of it, um, we could provide things like, you know, is there a, a policy and legal framework for internet development in Thailand? Yes, of course, that the National ICT Master Plan created in 2002, uh, which is in effect from 2001 to 2010, and then continuing to th Thailand policy, uh, ICT policy framework, which was in effect from 2011 to 2020, and um, followed by um, this so-called after the, the coup in 2014, and um, the, the government that was installed by the coup introduced the so-called 20-year strategic national development plan. But it became unclear as far as overall internet development is concerned. Uh, but we saw the um, or the um, this uh, uh, village broadband internet project. But as far as um, multi-stakeholder participation and, and accountability, uh, that is not quite present. In any case, um, much of the indicators under this topic, I, I probably won't be going um, one by one, but uh, I'll just be giving you uh, a fair assessment of what we found and, and some um, interesting um, findings. Um, much of the indicators under this topic ask about extent and evidence of participation by different stakeholder groups in internet related policy making and legislative processes. And we found that while there are constitutional provision and sectoral law that requires public hearings, it, it, and this is the larger framework of public participation, not just um, internet uh, development, um, there are um, constitutional provisions that, uh, that require public hearing or con consultation with relevant, uh, relevant stakeholder groups prior to a passage of law or regulation. Uh, the framework exists, but in terms of uh, the effectiveness of the ways these hearings or consultations are carried out, it's quite questionable. And not to mention the viable impact on the, the law and policy making process. Um, well, and, and one notable thing is about the, the current constitution, the 2016 constitution. It allows stakeholder consultation, and I mentioned this because in one of the indicator um, posited by the IUI, uh, they asked about whether there is a policy or legal arrangement for online consultation. So, which means, as far as the IU, uh, UNESCO IUI uh, conceptualization is concerned, um, the internet is is a uh, is some is viewed as a platform for public participation. But I think I don't I don't really think that the Thai government or the Thai public you know policy making body really view that as a as a two way communication platform. They look at it more as a public relation or information dissemination platform. So the two the conceptualization don't quite match. There is a mismatch. So um, in, in any case, there is um, 
this so-called law amendment uh, .go.th website, which is uh, which um, which are, which is um, by default it's, it's an online consultation channel for anybody who wants to <clears throat> um, raise questions or um, participate in any kind of input about um, law reform or law law, um, law amendments. But <clears throat> we also because we found that whether it be this website <clears throat> or email or conventional public hearings, um, there is still question about inadequacy, uh, adequacy of participation. At what point is the participation considered adequate? Is one or two adequate? There is no, um, <clears throat> sorry. There is no minimum, there is no guide, clear guideline as to if there's one and two, is that considered um, adequate? I mean, there is a platform, but when, when would it be adequate? Right? And, and another thing is a technical barrier and the error that the, there are a number of uh, complaints about technical errors and, 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 and barriers. People get um, maybe similar to this, <laughs> something like that because people can, uh, encounter all these barriers and errors you know when they, they, they log into the, the website and, and so forth and also the processing of input data by responsible authority because the we not really it's not really clear a lot of people that um, we talked to from the civil society uh, said that they have entered some information but they never there was never an empirical evidence that those um, inputs were really taken into account or taken further by the, by the um, authority in charge. Anyway, also the, the M indicator also um, discusses quite extensively about the local presence of internet governance mechanism or uh, IG mechanism, as well as participation of local stakeholders in internet governance at regional and international levels. Um, I think these indicators are very well thought out, and but but from the point of view of a small country like Thailand, um, which figures really um, minimally at such regional and international forums, um, I think the, the the indicators may mean from from our point from from the point of view of the informed informants, they may be a bit too broad based and too oblivious to specific needs and different positions of developing countries. And um, there are also um, some indicators in, 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 this, um, in, in this section on multi-stakeholderism that mention specifically about IGF, for Internet Governance Forums, because um, um, from some of the point of views of the informants, they feel that Coming from a small country like Thailand, um, and IGF being um, mainly a dialogue forum rather than a policy making forum, it doesn't. It kind of deter participation. They don't really see the. They don't really see the the merits of of investing in in going and, and, and so forth um, um, because. IGF doesn't really have a formal mechanism for input, particularly for from civil society and in, into any policies and documents too. And also, there was also apart from IGF, which was exists in a number of indicators in, in this category. Uh, there was also question raised about um, about the positioning of ICANN as an exemplar of multi-stakeholder forum for internet governance. Um, while the structure of ICANN may allow for participation at various levels, apart from the uh, G GAC, the GAC, uh, which is, uh, a, but if we look at a country specific situation, um, there are several um, factors that may influence participation, whether it be financial, I mean, it costs a lot to go to, to, to participate um, regularly, linguistically, um, political, cultural. And, and these are factors that I don't think are sufficiently recognized in, the, in, the, in these indicators. In the Thai case, um, uh, a few of our informants feel that these factors have distillated their fruitful participation at ICANN. 
so instead of phrasing participation as I can as a given an indicator or something that is taken for granted, I think it might do service to underprivileged countries such as ours uh, and, and in this world scheme of internet governance uh, to directly address limitations and obstacles that prevent their being a part of internet market stakeholderism. So it's located from, from the flip side. Okay, right. Okay, um, that's mainly on uh, topic. Um, we haven't we haven't participated in IGF. Um, Thai government hasn't participated in IGF since uh, 2015, and the last time that we brought APR IGF, we 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 were the sort of organizing team. Was it 2017? Um, very few, very few um, government organizations paid uh, any attention, and it was right here in Bangkok. You know, very few, and actually the NBTC was was uh, co-host. And they were very generous with um, with the sponsorship, but I think I only saw one who regularly participated. That was uh, Dr. Babili Zakapavos, and nobody else was from NBTC attended any session at all. So. Lastly, we have something quickly about the cross-cutting issues. It's uh, quite uh, difficult to get through, but I'm going to move through them quite quickly, I think. Um, so these are the four issues which go across the categories. Um, gender, children, sustainable development, trust and security, legal ethics. I'm going to concentrate more on the first three and, and, and less on those. Many of the issues have already covered, because they're cross-cutting, they cut across and they've already been mentioned under the other categories. So gender covers women's empowerment, uh, uh, barriers particularly for women or by sex in terms of addressing accessing the internet and obviously legal framework um, and flicking harassment uh, children uh, internet amongst children barriers it's the same same kinds of things rights for child uh, and sustainable development uh, sort of policy for long-term ICT development uh, the SME usage, and again, I've talked about that a little bit already about uh, sustainability there. Um, trust and security, cyber security, emergency responses, um, uh, legal and ethics, internet risks. Again, uh, um, as you can see, vulnerable groups have talked about a little bit already. So, gender. So, Generally speaking, the data suggests that women and, and men have generally equal access, equal roles and employment in Thailand. But uh, qualitative data kind of suggests that that is kind of masking still uh, a society in which there are um, women do face particular problems. The children, um, you know, the statistics suggest that familiarity with the internet starts as young as six or ten years old. All that implies, we talked about problems of, you know, we all as parents talk, think about uh, questions about whether our children should have access and when. Um, the Thai the education curriculum explicitly talks about ICT skills. Um, and there are indeed some initiatives to answer my own question about Child Protection Online, I was hearing about some of those yesterday, the day before. Um, but then there's still a question about how, to what extent, children really do get that sense of uh, training and use of the internet, um, which is, allows them to have uh, use it responsibly. Sustainable development, generally, um, institutions here um, I know, you know there's been several changes of government, but generally the institution structures here have been lasting, have been there for some time, and are continuing to develop new policies, 
um, in this area. Uh, um, usage statistics are high, uh, people access online information. I didn't mention the online banking, I think I was going to before. For me, this is like, uh, Thailand is one of the most advanced countries in the world in this sense. If I took a QR code into my shop in Canada, they wouldn't even understand what it was, and they'd be asking for my credit card the whole time. Um, this is something where Thailand is really leading the world in terms of developing uh, financial models for um, allowing people to uh, pay for anything um, through online facilities. Public facilities are there, internet in schools, libraries, clinics, though as in many countries now, people are saying, well, do we need those? Because increasingly everybody has a mobile phone and they just access the data wherever they are. So there's questions there, but as we've seen in rural areas, there are major barriers and limits, so there may well be a place for those still. SME activity, again, we've talked about that. Uh, very entrepreneurial society. Um, uh, maybe um, things moving on. Um, so, uh, again, um, some sensors to where things are here. So, there is questions of engagements in civil society, both in terms of security and trust. There are issues around uh, um, security for children and, and other people. Um, there have been uh, um, major, uh, there have been issues with uh, um, legal uh, sanctions that have been introduced in the last years, but you know, maybe these things are, are, are um, going to be modified in the future. Um, and uh, uh, overall, I, again, I want to pick up on Piron Gong's point as well. This is not just about the kind of monolithic set of 300 indicators. We also want to know how these indicators can reflect the internet in Thailand. So it's not just about we want you to fill out all these UNESCO indicators and then we'll be, this is what UNESCO thinks. This is a response to UNESCO as well about telling UNESCO what the internet looks like in Thailand. And I think there is plenty of capacity across this massive indicator suite uh, for picking out those subtleties, like I say, the advanced financial information here, um, the uh, cheapness of, of, of being able to access the internet, which gives Thailand major advantages at the global level um, in, in moving forward. Um, so really from now onwards, thank you and it's over to you. Please tell us um, where this works and where it doesn't and what's missing, where the gaps are and, and what changes should be made. It's a, it's a huge set of indicators. We've rushed through it very quickly. Um, if there's anything that you didn't see up there that you would think should be up there in terms of a topic or something, it may be hidden in the indicators somewhere that you didn't see. Um, but, or there may be things that went by too fast and you didn't quite capture or understand what the intention was or what the words or what the indicator meant. So initially, are there any questions about exactly what the indicators are, why they're there, so questions about the suite itself, um, or things that you think should be there that weren't, or misunderstandings. Uh, thank you so much for a uh, very thorough presentation. Um, as a representative of the civil society side, um, I just have a question. I think some of you mentioned on the last slide that uh, about the uh, bringing together of the multi stakeholders. Um, but like I have a question on the, the right side, like uh, of the national security with like the, the rights protection. How you find the benchmark between? I know like from, from the, the state side and from the civil society side, we often see that the different whole different side 
uh, sending side side of view, but I think this like kind of like platform that we can uh, come to like um, finding what's the benchmark or what can we have the same um, like perspective on how to balance like uh, oftentimes like said in this specifically in this region uh, they always say like we need to protect national security so some of the rights that could be except uh, could add already mentioned on the, uh, the personal data protection uh, section for right <laughs> that um, that could be lived if it's to protect national security so um, I'm not sure what's the point of view of the UNESCO how, how do you define national security and uh, either they have like hierarchy between like to protect uh, uh, to protect rights or to to give like the, the, the same to protect the national security yeah thank you Maybe if there's, if there's other questions as, as well, we'll take two or three perhaps there. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll, we'll start with, I mean, this is obviously is, is a big kind of question here. I think that the, there are, firstly, there are some benchmarks. Right. So th there is some um, principles which are adopted in the UN and adopted therefore by all countries which are written down about the kind of things that, that countries say they will do. Um, and so there's a sense in which it's clear in that sense what, what countries have said they will do. Um, but there are also, um, also on the other side, there are also practical issues, which mean that um, there are things which are covered by national security right the way across the board. And every country has its sense of national security, and rightly so, it has to um, maintain uh, um, its society, it has to maintain uh, its legal position, um, and elements like that. So, I think it's finding that balance. And recently, in all countries, this balance has, has changed as well. I mean, one of the issues where it's changed has been this issue around fake news, for example. And, and as Misako says, fake news has had perhaps a different complexion in different countries. And again, that balance has to be struck. And many countries have not found that balance yet, because it's, it's, it's such a new issue, it has to be fitted into law, it has to be, and they have to find the, the balance that's right for them. So I think again, in, in this sense, my sense would be that the indicators should express the sense of um, there are two sides to this question, and that Thailand is, is working its way towards a common understanding of what that balance should be. Um, and uh, as I say, no country has really found that balance yet. Um, do you want to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was expecting someone from uh, OHCHR to, to be there because uh, she's, uh, she's the legal uh, expert, uh, while uh, I'm not. But there is an importance to take into the human rights perspective. And when it comes to the, the right to freedom of expression and the right to access to information, and the balance between uh, cyber security and safety, uh, from the human rights perspective, there is a number of uh, instruments uh, which was enacted by, uh, I guess, you know, more by the Council of Europe which says that when access to information reveals some human rights issues, it should be given priority. Uh, it should not be hidden based on uh, national security issues. So there is already some kind of uh, you know, regional or international standards that's developed there, and uh, which uh, clearly set up the standards in terms of access to information, freedom of information, freedom of information, which says that when there are some human rights issues, it has to be given priority as compared to the national security. 
And then again, the advantages of this uh, UNESCO's uh, Internet Universality Indicator Framework is that under some categories, right, like right, you can highlight, you know, some of the challenges that the country has in terms of uh, 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 human rights or, you know, freedom of expressions. But on the other categories like uh, cross-cutting issues uh, or um, uh, or contextual, uh, yes, may, maybe cross-cutting uh, data, uh, you can also highlight uh, the, the the security and the, the need to protect, you know, child safety and these kind of things. So. It's, it doesn't aim to, uh, because as Simon mentioned, it's really a difficult balance and we are still uh, looking for, uh, for this balance, you know, in uh, many countries. Again, uh, the indicators uh, provide us information how a country is handling this balance. Right. Uh, if we uh, actually like, talking with like cases that actually already happened, right, and, and, and actually like... Uh, had some roots into the actual national laws that sometimes may go uh, along with the international standard and, and try to extend the uh, uh, sometimes the uh, uh, interpretation to make it more fit into the current situation, right? Because like, actually, uh, 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 for example, those like uh, 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 universal uh, 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 declaration of human rights, right? Or, or even those like, ICCPR that uh, concern about those uh, civil rights and political rights, right? Uh, uh, has been uh, ratified like uh, quite some time ago, right? That uh, at the time there's no such thing like internet yet, right? So I think it's really important that when we uh, read those like uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights or ICCPR or like or uh, other declaration, for example, those like economic and cultural rights, uh, uh, it shouldn't be read uh, in itself, right? But it should should be uh, read together with uh, the more updated, basically, right? Uh, of those like uh, comments from the special repertoire, right? To make it like more uh, relevant to the current situations. And I think like uh, so 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 in a sense, right? Uh, we can say those ICCPR uh, or Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's more or less like constitution. Right, which like okay, this is a principle that all the member states like like uh, like, like to go with, right? But of course, there are like uh, different situations uh, 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 and, uh, that happens uh, in 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 different countries and whatsoever, right? Which is like uh, I think that's that's the reason why we have like national laws, right? But anyway, those natural laws needs amendment anyway, right? Or when the uh, the uh, environment or the situation change, or, or in some country, the court itself. Actually, they like, sometimes do the interpretation of of the actual uh, 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 written text, right? So I think uh, maybe uh, we can uh, go back, right? And I think this this is the thing, right? Uh, uh, there's a lot of time uh, uh, when when it comes to the uh, the the read, right, of these uh, international uh, standards, right, or in Thai context, whether it's from civil society or it's from private sector or whether it's from uh, the government, right. Uh, a lot of times, we not really like uh, do care much about these comments from the special repertoire. We just like stick to the some principle that like twenty years or uh, thirty years like uh, written like back at the time, right? So I think like uh, to to make it like more updated, to to bring those principle uh, into the digital age, right? I think like uh, the comments from special repertoire may help uh, 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 in this area. Thanks. Um, yes, I don't know if you. Uh, um Miss Kempon, uh, you, know, you, can, you, you, you want to say a few words about the child protections and the security uh, law, yeah? Uh, actually, in, in Thailand, uh, the Ministry of uh, Human Security Social development and uh, human security. They uh, uh, have the national plan on the, the child protection uh, online protection. Already, they have the, the the plan of action and set up the body uh, to implement that kind of uh, uh, action plan already. But uh, I. 
actually the, the points that I would like to, to talk about is uh, about the education, the right to education in, in Thailand. I, I think when we talk about education, we mean the quality education and lifelong education. And we also have a lot of problems in the uh, education system in Thailand because it, it's not a uh, low active learning, but it's like a, you know, just uh, competitive for the examination for the higher uh, level of education, but it's not the critical thinking. It's not provide the critical thinking for the children. So it's linked to the uh, media information, digital literacy is in among the children. That that is the, the, the I think it's the same as your presentation that the the skill skill to access is more important than the effort effort level. And access accessibility is one uh, com component of the uh, media in, uh, information literacy. But in school, the students not access and uh, lack of skill to the access ability, uh, the skill of the information literacy. Even the, not not the children themselves, but the teacher as a whole, they don't know what is the media information literacy. So we uh, have many cases that the conflict among the teacher and the student that when they use the mobile phone in class, some some uh, school not allow the student to to bring the, the mobile phone to school. But that in conflict among the uh, policy in, uh, in school. So I, I think uh, UNESCO also already have the indicator about the uh, media literacy. I, I should uh, suggest that it should link that uh, indicator to this indicator. Okay, thank you. Maybe can can I actually like bring the discussion in into like uh in into like uh, uh another area uh, about like uh, where we can actually uh get those uh like figures numbers like uh to to uh more or less answers the the, the those like uh, uh questions uh, for for the indicators right uh that's uh, for example that's that's that two points that I I discussed with uh, Simon earlier it's like uh the first one is like it's quite difficult for us to uh get into the information for example about the uh, languages right that uh, has been used like on thailand or uh, internet right so there's actually a survey right there are some uh, figures and numbers like from the uh, summer institute of uh, 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 linguistic right sil right that talk about like the, the uh, different uh, uh, linguistic families uh, in thailand right so there's like, Srento, thai there's like uh, there's Hmong, there's uh, uh, different like languages in thailand right and and there are uh, some statistics on that right but uh, those numbers are uh, f more for the offline and and like uh, eth ethnic groups, right? In in different regions, right? But we don't actually have the numbers to actually answer directly to to the questions in in these indicators, like about like for example, if uh, the question asks about like for example, like uh 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 how uh say like uh what are the uh, percentage of the uh content in uh, Central Thai. What are the percentage of uh, content in uh, uh, your uh, Isan language? What are the percentage of like so, so, something that right? We we don't actually have the the figure for that to answer the indicators. That's one thing. Another thing is that like uh, sometimes we found that like uh, numbers from different uh, uh, organization it's not uh, very well aligned. For example, the number of like the internet users, right, Simon? like uh we, we have like uh one from nso right which is i think like from from this is like from the uh census right and there's one from 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 uh Nectet, which is i think like about the protection from from the internet bandwidth right and then we have like a uh, one from nbtc which is i think more of like subscriptions right uh in, in terms of like uh fixed line and and and, and mobile uh, uh, uh users 
so that's that's that one thing. So so uh, it's so so okay. Uh, understandable that the the methodology is like different, right? So that's why the figure is, is like uh, a bit different. But sometimes like we see like the numbers actually like, dipping down, which is like quite strange, right? That's one thing. And also uh, sometimes because we don't actually have the uh, direct uh, uh, numbers uh, for for the indicators, we tend to use the closest one. For example, the survey by by Edda, right? The, the that uh, talking about the uh, consumers of the e-commerce online, right? Uh, the, the electronic commerce. But then again, uh, that that indicator uh, has uh, it's a little bit questionable as well in terms of like the population uh, of of who actually an answer the survey because the way we see like uh, there's a tendency that uh, Facebook users will be the one that more represented in the EDA survey. Because the way Edda uh, uh, promote uh, the survey, right? It's most of the time promote through this social media, Facebook, right? So, so uh, uh, that's more of like a question, like how to actually like uh, uh, to our uh, uh, because our limited time, right? There's uh, uh, some limitation to actually uh, go through all the available resource, right? So if you actually have like a knowledge about like oh, actually like this. Figures, uh, this number is already available, right? Uh, uh, please uh, do share. Thanks. Uh, I have uh, one more question, like about whether you did like the research cover those stateless person and also the refugees. Like Thailand, we have big night camp along the border. No, they they're not taking into the account. So. Let, let me, I, I want to try and put all these points together a bit. So it is always a problem, I think, in this area that the number of users is, there are different versions that are here. Um, so, and it, 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 it's very confusing, but the, the best, most reliable data are the household data from the National Statistics Office. If you're looking at any country for the, to get a sense of the just users that's there, um, a lot of the providers, internet service providers, telecoms companies, collect these survey data, but they, um, often they are subscriptions, and in you know, nowadays people can own several phones: a phone for work, a phone for home, and and so the count can be confusing to say the least and the the head of household you know I may buy a phone for my child so is it my phone or a children's phone and who is the subscription under so there are many questions here um, and as Art was saying um, what we see from ETDA and and you know, it, 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 the provider data has its place but what we see from EDDA is that the surveys are online. Um, and online surveys are problematic because they don't include people who are not online um, or who don't, as, as Art says, you don't, if it's a Facebook survey, if you don't log into Facebook, you're not in the survey. Um, so there, there are a lot of issues around, around there. Um, uh, but the, that data is clear. However, um, there are problems um, which the National Statistics Office can answer better than I can about the remoter areas in terms of households. So those populations, they may be very difficult to get to. They, are, um, they may be, I know they're not exactly nomadic, but they, they may move between the summer and the winter so you make a different picture different times of the year. There are people who, are, who move across the borders legally or illegally. Um, so those populations, it's difficult to get accurate data for them. Um, there are some surveys in, in many countries that have, have tried to address that. Um, but um, the other thing on the languages from, from a personal perspective, I think, is that yes, the vast majority of the people in Thailand can speak Thai. But it's not just a question of that. Um, so for example, in, in education, 
UNESCO has a policy that in the first years of schooling, you should be taught in your mother tongue. That's what you know. You don't need to know. You, you talk to your family. And, and in a way, as the internet becomes more universal, that should be the same here. But you should be able to use your mother tongue on the internet. Just as you use it, you should be able to in early years at school. So I think there's a question mark there. And it's difficult, again, again, all this is a question of balance. What is the way forward? You know, this would not be, it would be less of an issue maybe if Thailand wasn't so advanced in the internet. You know, it's so advanced in the internet that it, it highlights these rural areas and these more remote areas as being a sticking point. And that's, you know, as you move forward, where do we go next? And that's where you go next, I think. Um, on the, the question of uh, the skills and uh, um, um, uh, education, uh, lifelong learning, um, I think, firstly, phones in the classroom every country is, is having this discussion. Now, I've heard this on the, the radio in Montreal, in Canada, and even in Montreal, one school says yes and another school says no. One teacher says yes and another school says no. And, and it's, it's like the child protection. The easiest way I think of it is to think of it as a parent. You know, you're never quite sure what's the best thing to do on, on the internet with your children now. So there aren't any principles, and, and everybody from the classroom upwards is trying to find a way as to the best places. And we're all worried about the effect that this is having on children. So there is there, and, and tying that in a little bit to the skills, um, I, I was saying um, earlier, I think, that, that the skills, again, the skills UNESCO is working to find, have, uh, very thorough statistical definitions of skills in this area because these are um, global statistical indicators under the Sustainable Development Goals. But UNESCO hasn't got there yet. The closest that has got is there's a European standard which more asks about activities than skills. But that is the most acceptable uh, statistical standard and the uh, International Telecommunications Union, which sets the standards for measuring uh, household work on ICTs, has, has adopted that. And I think UNESCO is moving towards that too. But we haven't got there yet. But it, I think it, it's going to happen. Um, there's a lot of pressure for that to happen. And it is, it, it's, it's extremely difficult to measure skills. Um, and I can, uh, I'd be involved, I had led a project for two years trying to measure literacy on the global level. And it's hard enough just to measure literacy. You know, how do you compare um, alphabetic scripts with China ideographic scripts, for example, um, and different standards? It's, it's pretty impossible. And um, after two years, I wanted to change my job. And luckily, they let me. <laughs> Uh, from that I would like to share part about the, the, the way that uh, my office uh, conducts my business uh, office of the regional research uh, 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 We conduct the survey on the uh, media information literacy and also the digital literacy for the media information literacy uh, based on the, uh, the UNESCO framework. We conduct uh, the survey um, I think it's very interesting. Yeah. And uh, at the report, also a while ago on the website, you can get to add the MIL survey.org. And we also, um, something that we do uh, about the digital literacy, uh, we try to uh, develop the, the um, something like the curriculum about the digital literacy for the for the uh, for the children, I think. Yeah. 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 I have some questions regarding to the the third dimension of the model, which you which about the accessibility to all in the sub indicators. You mentioned about equitable access, mm -hmm. and when you uh, define 
the group of people you define by geographic, gender, uh, disability, something like that. I wonder um, for the people who illiterate, who can read or write. So the way that they gain the information just from from listening or seeing. But here there are not indicators indicate that uh, are there any um, information which are available in that format? Right. I like. Do you what I mean? Right. But when you when you define the group of people, you did include the one who cannot read and write. So it's not being like. Because you mentioned about the disability, sometimes they deaf, right? They yeah. or they're blind. So you have some kind of the website that can be somewhere for them, right? But but that's you made it for the disability. But other people they're not disabled, but they just cannot read or write. So they cannot gain the knowledge from the text. So they have to gain the knowledge from the pictures or the yeah. So this group might not be included here for accessibility for all. I think it's a good point. It might be possible to produce some, some data on that, I think, because uh, um, I'm not sure, and I'm kind of glancing at NSO colleagues, but, but like I say, I, I spent three years working on just trying to measure literacy. Um, the, the normal way of measuring literacy is, is simply self-reporting, it's just to ask. Um, and a lot of national surveys do ask that question. And, and that's used at the global level too. To, but it's, it's not a very good question, but it's probably the best, still the only one we've got. Um, and it might be possible to then to cross refer them to the use of ICTs. So you could kind of at least say um, what percentage of illiterates own a smartphone or a computer. And it would be interesting to see, um, a good idea, interesting to see what that looks like. And whether again, um, in the context of our 300 indicators, we would go into that because I suspect it would produce the same result, the same map, for example, that, that the illiterate people in Thailand would largely be in the rural areas in those same blue provinces that were there before. So it, 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 it's, um, but it, it, it's worth looking at, and I think um, in particular, your, your overall point as well is really important. So, um, what we're really saying here is, uh, which, given the fact that the majority of people in Thailand have no problems with phones or computers, who are these people who are kind of at risk of left, being left behind? And we want all categories which may be involved there. Um, and we need to know what those categories are because that's the nature of the problem. Um, so they may not be disabled, but if they can't read and write, that in itself may be the problem and how, how to find them. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I, I have a two question. One is a general question and the second one is a type of specific question. Uh, general question is that I'm still uh, in the process of digesting the implementation, but uh, I understand that the, the overall concept of uh, this IUI is not to describe whether it is good or bad, but uh, it uh, just provides an overall picture of a certain country. So based on that understanding, my general question is that with this concept of IUI, then what do you go in, in coming in the each one of the indicators? It seems like, uh, uh, is there any assumption that you know, the higher, higher uh, like a figure is better or like uh, answering yes is better or not? So, 
it, it seems like the worst, you know, overall picture, uh, overall cost of IUI is not whether it is good or bad, but each indicator seems like a, you are talking about whether you know, it, it is good or bad. But that's the first question. And the second question is uh, with regard to, uh, the second question is a uh, kind of detailed question. In, in the accessibility to all, there is a uh, like, uh, question or indicator uh, about the uh, the question is what proportion of the, of the population subscribes, blah, blah, blah. And the indicator is number of fixed, fixed broadband subscription and number of IP addresses. So my question is that uh, now we are living like a mobile era. And to what extent fixed broadband subscription helps what? And also, thanks to IP addresses, uh, if we are talking about IP before, so the issue is that uh, the availability of the IP group 4, but now we are moving to IP three six. So what is the like uh, actual the intention to see number of IP addresses uh, within the country? Okay, so so I th I think um in the first, to your first question, there certainly there is not a sense really of, of really trying to see um, anything as good or bad. But obviously, for each category and overall, there is a, a, an understanding that one will move towards recommendation. So, um, and I think it, it, obviously any kind of report tends to have something at least which says this is the way forward. And I think that's the, the thrust there. But on the other hand, there are obviously some indicators which lend themselves more to a, a clear um, dynamic of one way or the other. And, and, and numbers of internet users is obviously one of those indicators. So you want to see it moving to 100%. And I, I don't think there's uh, questions about that. For the broadband and IP addresses, I think the simplest thing to say is that um, it is a global standard, and in, in certain countries, this is going to be more relevant than, than others. And I think it, it's less so in Thailand. Um, but for example, in the, uh, I'm shortly to go to work, um, not on this area, but in Liberia, uh, in Africa. Um, in Liberia, the problem is actually no electricity. But it's good, in fact, good cell phone coverage everywhere, but there's nowhere to charge your cell phone. And so fixed lines and broadband and fixed Posts tend to be the way forward still in, in Liberia, um, and it's extremely difficult even on that basis. Yeah, so, so yeah, thank, thank, thank you very much. So, it, it's, so I understand that uh, no, after you conduct the uh, analysis of China, then it's up to like a Thailand government or Thailand people in which area or indicators they will focus on or they will focus on their own people. So sometimes if it is issue of an indicator of the IP address or uh, program, it's, it's not an issue of the no. Okay, I, I, I think I have yeah, and uh, also we call it uh, indicators. Actually, it's uh, well statistically, it's not all of them are not indicators. They are like uh, standards. And of course, there is a vision behind the indicators because, uh, you know, UNESCO advocate for an internet in which, you know, everyone, on which everyone can express freely their opinion without, you know, being put in a jail. And so the, the indicators behind the right, it's also, you know, there is a, a vision and uh, an intention behind for an internet to be, you know, human right based, you know, open, accessible, so on. I just uh, I mean, uh, uh, you might have a follow-up question and say, well, if, if that's what Thailand's doing, what is UNESCO doing? So I think, you know, why is this, what is this the UNESCO? And Misako can correct me or, or add to it if I, if I go wrong, but 
it's also a sense that this is a, as I say, it's a kind of statement that where Thailand is on the internet. So many people in the global internet will, or in UNESCO headquarters, will be able to pick up a report and say, well, this is what the internet looks like in Thailand, and this is what the internet, so I'm reading the report from Benin in Africa, this is what the internet looks like in Benin. Not to say that one is better or worse than the other, but just to get, and for me, yes, and for me as well, I think, so the internet is now in, in I say the same people I was at the meeting of ITU in Geneva last week. And they were saying that the internet is going beyond technology. You know, that, that with the internet of things and, and nowadays people don't know whether they're on the internet or not. When I get in my car, I don't know whether my GPS is using a satellite or the internet. When we have these things plugged in our brain in a few years' time, we won't know. Um, so it, it's it's also a sense of um, that that we, the internet is taking different character in different parts of the world. So as I've said again here, you see the financial payment systems which are really advanced, but similar to China. And this is a nation perspective. Um, in North America, they're not advancing on payment. Um, so they're going in a different direction. And, and maybe again, what this will do over time is we will see that, that a different character of the internet in different regions and different places. And that will come out of these reports as well because they are qualitative uh, as much as anything. Thank you, Simon. Do you, any um, any last questions before we break? Yes, please. <laughs> 